He sat down to write a poem. One about life and things. One that would tell and shriek and yell. One that would soar and sing. He would mention his mind and, and the trees and the sea. And his heart and his girl and their love. He defined what was good, what was bad, what was odd, and add a coda to God. So, he thought and he pondered upon all these things till his being rumbled with fear. So, he put down his pen, lit a cigarette, then ended his poem right here. God burn it, Miss Smith. How do you keep all them poems in your head straight like that? I mean, you've been going on like this for a couple hours. Just a simple accident of nature, Mr. Cartwright. Like warts. <laughs> who, uh, who wrote this one? An ancient druid priest, name of Kaliwabbles, who was foully slain by a pack of rabid suffragettes. For the inner man. Neath the weeds and the wild berries, near the barren praying trees, past that gash of a road by my home, stood the deafness first strike you, friend? Look, mister, I've been putting up with your stuff for near an hour now. That's long enough, I'd say. Then you don't plan to cease playing that machine? No, I don't. Uh, in that case, I shall strike you so hard that you will have to remove your boots to brush your teeth. Here, have a drink. Come in. What have you got in here? Here? Yeah. 
Oh, I just got a little food I'm taking out the barn. Has your horse developed a fondness for peach pie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, this ain't for my horse. It's, uh, it's for a fella I met in town. I... What, you put him up in the barn? Well, yeah, he was sort of sick, see, boy, and I... Of course, we always put sick people up in the barn. Well, he ain't exactly sick, you see. He, uh, he had a little too much to, to eat. That said, he overate. He ah. ate too much, mm -hmm. yeah. And that's why you're bringing him some more food. Ain't doing too well, am I? Not so far. <clears throat> well, the truth of the matter is, Paul, he had a little too much to drink. Ah. Uh -huh. No, the truth of the matter is, he had a way too much to drink. He's drunk. Oh, I see. Oh, Stu, why do you always have to turn this place into a, a home for grown-up foundlings? Well, Paul, I couldn't just leave him in town. Oh, of course you couldn't leave him in town. Anytime some fellow runs into town and gets himself roaring drunk, it becomes your responsibility. Right? Well, it does if I bought him some of it. Oh. Look, Paul, it was perfectly honest, and I, I just bought him a couple of drinks while he was reciting. While he was reciting? Well, he, he wasn't exactly reciting. He was... He was telling me what a good hand he was. That's what he was doing. Oh. And I remember you telling us that we needed a new hand. Oh, well, wait a minute. You didn't hire him. Well, Paul, he had, he had awful good references. Well, so far, the only references I've heard is that he gets drunk. Oh, oh so I, honestly, I... Well, I suppose it wouldn't hurt to try him out anyway. Well, I'll, uh, I'll just take this one out. There's the one point. good thing about the whole situation, though. At least he's a ranch hand. He's not one of those other strays that you're always bringing home. <laughs> My little red riding hood, how kind of you not to forget your old granny. <laughs> There's some good chicken in here for you. You didn't bring a bottle? Look, Mr. Smith, we gotta sober you up. Why? Because you got a job here, that's why. I have a what? Well, you, you broke, you ain't got no money, so you must need a job. I don't know how to do anything on a ranch. You learn. Why are you so interested in me? Well, I sort of back myself into a corner, I reckon. I'm sort of committed to you. What will I have to do? Well, the first thing you gotta do is sober up. Go and try some of that chicken. It's good. Mm. Don't you have anything to drink? Yep, go ahead. Assassin! <laughs> Thank you. 
that chain! Don't you know you can kill a man like that? Well, there's one thing for dang sure. Work ain't gonna kill you. I, uh... Oh, what happened was I, I had to move into the shade because I felt a sunstroke coming on. Yeah, I imagine a hundred-proof sunstroke must be pretty rough stuff. Now, look, we're not paying you to sleep, you know. Joe, you heard him. Said he felt a sunstroke coming on. What, you gonna believe that? Well, I don't see any reason why not to. Brother, remind me to talk to you about the Easter Bunny sometime. Uh, your faith in human nature is refreshing. Your uh, brother seemed to think I was lying. Come on, Will. Let's face it, let's be honest. You got a hangover that's longer than a 20-foot log on a 10-foot buckboard. Well, if you think that, well, why I'll did you... Well, I'll tell you, my friend. I, I just got a feeling that somewhere mixed in with all that booze and baloney, there's a man. You're taking a lot for granted, aren't you? Maybe I am. Last night in the Silver Dollar Saloon, you were a man. Oh, you were all liquored up all right, but you knew what them words was about. You knew what they meant and why. So I figure somewhere in that frame, there's enough of a man that it's worth the trouble. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Will. I'm going to sit down right over there, and I'm going to watch you chop that stump down to size if it takes all day and all night. Get to chopping. Oh. told me that the tree stumps on the Ponderosa were made out of stone. Better get a move on, Smith. That's supper. Now, don't mention food to me. I'll eat your share. you limb from limb. Be reasonable, Draves. All I want is, is a little sip. That's all. Just a steady... That's my bottle. You took it from my saddlebag. Please, Draves. Hand it over, Smith. what you're looking for? That's mine, Mr. Cartwright. You took it from my saddlebag. 
Is that true? Well. Is it true? Yes! You'll be sure you're out the Ponderosa by morning. Boss. You don't know how bad it can get. I reckon I don't will, but I know how bad you can get now, don't I? The affirmation of man one rises from his chair and confirms the affirmation of... <laughs> well, if you would stop and think about it, you realize that there has to be a certain trust between human beings. No more credit. But in a healthy economy, there has to be a certain amount of give and take. All right. A poem, then. Now, that's another thing you and me better get straight. I heard enough of your poems to last me forever. But if you would just allow me to... Look, Rumbum, get out. I'm sick of you. No ape is going to dictate terms to me. <laughs> I'll funnel you with it your life! Up. Get out of here! Get You go ahead with your laughing. Oh, well. oh. I'm not drunk, Hoss. I'm just dying. Some people refuse to accept the fact that the human brain was never meant to be pickled in alcohol. Yeah. He is going to be all right, though, ain't he, Doc? Man's got the constitution of a horse. And if he keeps on drinking, he'll have the lifespan of one also. Let's see. Oh, I'll need his name for the prescription. Yeah, it's Will Smith, I think. Not according to this. William Warlock Evans? Evans? 
Here's a letter addressed to him from San Francisco from a Mrs. Lydia Evans. They got to be his wife? That couldn't be the one that's a poet, could it? I don't know. I never heard of him. William Warlock Evans is one of the most gifted young poets this country's got. Do you suppose that's him in there? You know, Doc, it just could be. As a matter of fact, I'll bet you it is. Damnation! Damnation! I'm stripped in a buff! Hey, Will. Come on. Hey, lay down, buddy. Hey. Relax, relax. Come on. Stop thrashing about here. Come on. Relax, Will. Lay down. Lay down and relax, buddy. Come stay on. Down. Come on. Say there. Where do you think I could go dressed like this? You're feeling dizzy? No, this is the way I always talk. Well, I've got some sad news for you, my friend. You're going to have to stop drinking. What did it take you all eight years of medical school to figure that out? Oh, so I'll leave Mr. Evans' prescription down with Matt Graber. All right. You can pick it up there. Yes, sir. Oh. You know, I always felt there was a certain resemblance between doctors and bartenders. They both strive to remove pain. Then they restore the agony with a bill. <laughs> Oh, if they were going to be fair about it. What did he call me? He called you Mr. Evans. Mr. Evans? What are you going to do? I don't know. I can tell you what I'd like to do. I'd... I'd like to take you back to the Ponderosa and dry you out. Why? I don't know. Maybe I'm a sucker, but I got a notion that a man like you's worth it. And as soon as we got you on your feet again, we can get a hold of your wife and get her out here. No! What do you think I'm running from? Look, I'd, I'd rather burn in hell through all eternity than to spend one second with that woman. Well, that's... That's sort of up to you, Will. Hey, your father wouldn't take me back anyway. I'm a convicted thief, drawn and quartered. Yeah, but once he finds out who you are... No one is to know who I am. I mean that. I've carried the burden of being William Warlock Evans too long. Now, you still think you can get me that job back? I don't know. But we can try. Well, so far, you haven't given me one valid reason. Oh, boy, I just think he needs help, that's all. No, he needs help, all right. I think we're all in agreement with that. Hoss, I, I don't want to appear hard. Oh, Paul, I know your point, but that Bernard, I got one, too. It, it, it's easy to explain as yours, but, boy, if you'd have seen him out there today when I picked him up, you'd know what I was talking about. You want to hire him? All right. You hire him. You pay him. You'll be responsible for him. Yes, sir. He's out there in the bookhouse, I think. I'll go tell him right now. The boy's just too easy going for his own good. I agree with you, Pye. You're absolutely right. He's got that silly notion about trying to help people. I just don't know where he gets it from.
Your food's getting cold. <laughs> it looks like wood. It feels like wood. <laughs> but it saws like iron. <laughs> Well, how am I doing, Professor? Well, I'll tell you, Will, you get a you get an A for effort. But I'll have to give you an F for results. Let me show you something. Here. Don't fight it so. Don't use just your arms. Get your whole body in. Get you a nice rubber. Okay. I admit it's worked so far, but I don't think that two weeks is going to change Will all that much. You said yourself that he's packing his share of the load now, Paul. Well, sure, that's because he doesn't stop to quote poetry every time a leaf falls off a tree. Yeah, I don't know if that's altogether good either. Well, I'll tell Charlie we'll pick the rest of this stuff up next week. Yeah. Are you Mr. Ben Cartwright? Yes, ma'am. Can I help you? I am Mrs. William Evans. I've been making inquiries, and I have reason to believe that my husband is one of your employees. Evans. William Evans. Well, ma'am, we have a... we have a, a... William Smith, and a, we have a, a Bill Perkins. And Paul, it's Will Smith that you're talking about. Ma'am, I'm... I'm Horse Cartwright. And Will is out on the Ponderosa, yes. Will Smith is really William Warlock Evans, Paul. The poet? I... I, th I thought he was dead. He is. In more ways than you can imagine, you tell Will that the game's over. I found him. I'm at the hotel. You can bring him there. Oh, ma'am, uh, we can take you to him. I've come this far, Mr. Cartwright. Now he has to come to me. back so soon. You didn't expect me to finish in two hours, I hope. That ain't why I'm here, Will. You know, I used to always sneer at writers who wrote about the joy of work and nature. But after the day, I don't think I'll sneer anymore. <laughs> I'll throw rocks. Will, what I, what I came to tell you was your wife's in town. She wants to talk to you. Did you send for her? Certainly not. Don't lie to me. I ain't lying to you. I ain't never lied to you, have I? I'm getting out of here. I'm taking that horse. Will. Will. You run if you must. But you ain't stealing my horse, you hear? Well, you ain't gonna stop me. I trusted you like I trusted her. And you both betrayed me. Well, I'm getting out of here. Go ahead, kill me. Will, I don't know what that woman done to you, but... Why don't you kill me? I'm begging you. You're a man. A man will beg. <laughs> You're right. They don't surrender either. I'm surprised he took your horse. That's a new low, even for Will. I don't rightly know what got into him, ma'am. He simply reverted to type. He ran. Well, the direction he headed up 
Toward those mountains, there's only one town up there. A few Mexican families and a little cantina. We could be up there in no time. Did you tell Will that I was here? Yes, sir, I did. And you don't have the heart to tell me it was that bad, wasn't it? Whatever he said was foul and violent, and then he left. He ran. Well, ma'am, it wasn't that, that Will didn't want to face you. It was he can't face himself, don't you see? Well, I am tired of chasing after Will. I have followed Will through more dirty little towns than I can name. And <laughs> for so long that it's, it's almost a habit. Well, well, habits can, can be broken. Ma'am, ma'am, I, I don't know what went on between you and Will, but... No. No, you do not. That's why you're willing to go after Will, to try to help him again. Well, I won't go after Will. I can't do it anymore. Oh. Oh. gave it to me on our fifth wedding anniversary. A golden brooch to match the golden light in your eyes, he said. So, you see, Hoss, things haven't always been like this with Will and me. But that time is over, and I'm going to forget about Will. And I advise you to do the same. Ma'am, can you do that that easy? Easy? I never said it was easy. Um, I, I have a lot of packing to do. Would you, would you excuse me, please? Yes, ma'am. plays like a fallen angel, doesn't he, my friend? They say Miguel was born with a guitar in his hand. Uh. <laughs> Talent is a curse. An albatross slung around the neck like the last banner of defeat. <laughs> it enhances the thirst, my friend. You don't know what I'm talking about, do you? No, senor. My friend, of all the creatures in the world, man is the unhappiest. And yet you smile. Why? I enjoy being alive. Let's straight to that. Don't you think you've had enough, senor? There's never enough until there's oblivion to life. May it last forever. Yes, 
May it keep us all warm. Salud, señor. Would, would you mind if I lowered my head for a moment to rest my eyes? I feel suddenly quite ready to pull down the curtain. Señor! 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 Jesus, you in there? Estamos cerrados. We're all closed up. Jesus, it's me, Hoss Cartwright. Oh, señor. Un minuto. Buenas noches, mi. Buenas noches, Hoss. Well, figures. First saloon he came to. Is he a friend of yours, señor? Yeah, he's a friend. He stole my horse. There is a lot of sadness in this man. See how he sleeps like a baby. You want to take him home? No. Might as well let him sleep as long as he can. You got a place to keep him? See the back room? Good. If he wakes up before I get back, you keep him here, even if you have to hit him with a club, you hear? Don't worry, he won't wake up. Miguel, ayúdame. The bags are right over. I hate to bother you again, Miss Evans. But you found Will. Yes, sir. Did you tell him that I was leaving? Well, I couldn't. You see, he was asleep. He was drunk, wasn't he? Yes, sir. Well, why did you come here? Why couldn't you let me go in peace? Well, that's just it, ma'am. I figured if I let you leave now that you'd never know another minute's peace the rest of your life because you still love him. Can a woman love insults and threats and tantrums? No, ma, I reckon not. But she can love the good she finds in a man and try to help him. I have tried. What else can I do? Well, try once more. Do you think it's really worth another try? Isn't it always? We've come to help you, Will. <laughs> Aren't I lucky to have such a conscientious little mother? Yep. I'd say you were at that, Will. Well, look at her. Standing there, the, the symbol of martyrdom. 
And she glories in it. Don't you have anything to say to me, my love and keeper? See, she's dumb literally as well as figuratively. Well, I'm going to say something, Will. I'm getting pretty fed up with you picking this woman apart when all she's trying to do is... No. That's exactly what he wants. Someone to argue with. Someone to attack. No. Listen to the woman. It's the truth, Will. And you know it. This is the way you keep me from getting close to you with ridicule and insults. Just so I won't see how frightened you are. Frightened? Me? <laughs> Dear girl, and that's a charitable term if I ever heard one. I am William Warlock Evans, and I happen to possess a writing talent commonly acknowledged by all. And there's not one thing in this whole flaming world that frightens me. Except William Warlock Evans. She's talking in riddles. She's talking a lot of sense, Will. Oh, that's your considered opinion? Yeah. Yes, it is. And I'll tell you something else that's my considered opinion. No question about it, Will. You're a great writer. But you're something else, too. You're pathetic. Fire! Even a marionette has more guts than I do. Get him to the table. Come on, Will. Come on. can't fight it any longer, Will? Well, I can't fight it for you. So we'll forget that we are husband and wife and we'll be married to this. I can't pull you out of the gutter, so I'll just crawl right in with you. To William Warlock Evans and his memory. Lydia, no. Don't do that. You don't care what happens to yourself. What do you care what happens to me? For the rest of your life, Will, I'm going to be right with you. Glass for glass and bottle for bottle. I'm going to be a mirror that you can't escape. A twisted, warped image. What I've had to live with all these years. Why do I do this to you, Lydia? What, what kind of a man am I? you can call a man is a million years in one shape. Remember that, Will? Did you ever finish it? I can't finish it! Don't you understand that? I'm burned out. I'm a shell of an artist. Why can't you see that? Why can't you see it? That flame you had inside you, it's still there. You still got it. 
You're just too close to it, that's all. You really believe that, don't you? The whole world believes it, Will. That's what we're trying to tell you. Why? Why do you bother with me? After what I've done to you. Because I love you. It's as simple as that. Take my hand, Will. Maybe it's worth a try. Another try, Lydia. It always is. was filled with chicken pie. Oh, fare the well, old Joe Clark, fare the well, I'm gone. Fare the well, old Joe Clark, I better be getting on. I went down to old Joe's house, never been there before. He slept on a feather bed and I slept on the floor. Oh, I went Andy? down to... Come here, boy. Yes, sir? You should have been on your way to town a half hour ago. I'll have the wagon loaded in a minute, Pa. I'll just have a couple more sacks of grain. Well, get that wagon loaded and get out of here. I want you back by noon, understand? Yes, sir. I got work for us to do. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll be back in time. And boy. Yes, sir. Don't let me catch you loafing again here. I wasn't loafing, Pa. Honest. Singing like a fool. You're no bird. You're a half-grown man. And a man's joy is to work, not to sing. You hear? Yes, sir, I hear you. We'll drop off a sack of feed to Cartwrights. We voted to him for a week now. Yes, sir, I will. on the floor. Oh, fare the well, old Joe Clark, fare the well, I'm gone. Fare the well, old Joe Clark, I better be getting on. Old Joe had a yellow cat, neither sing nor pray. She stuck her head in a buttermilk jar and washed her sins away. Oh, fare the well, old Joe Clark, fare the well, I'm gone. Fare the well, old Joe Clark, I better be getting on. The higher up the cherry tree, the riper grows the cherry. The more you hug and kiss the girls, the sooner they will marry. Oh, fare the well, old Joe Clark, fare the well, I'm gone. Fare the well, old Joe Clark, I better be getting on. How you doing, Annie? Oh, hi, little Joe. 
I'm just bringing back that green you pawed on us. Well, there was no hurry with it, but thanks anyway. Everything's going at your place. Ah, uh, you know, Pa's been keeping me busy. We've been clearing that new ground, and that doesn't leave me too much time for anything <laughs> else. Pa wants to plow it this fall. Have you heard anything from Adam? Yeah, yeah, got a letter from him last week. He's in Paris now. He's wow. going to spend the winter and spring there. Boy, would I love to see some of those places. My Ma used to always tell me about London and Paris and Rome, and she'd been to every one of them. Well, who knows, you might get to see him someday. Uh, those places might as well be on the other side of the moon, as far as I'm concerned. I'm lucky to get off the farm long enough to go to Virginia City. Yeah, well, that makes two of us. You going into town? Yeah. Listen, give me time to saddle up my horse, I'll go with you. Sure. Buy you a beer. Although that is, if your pot don't mind. Well, I've... I've never had a beer, or even been in a saloon, for that matter. I guess it's about time. Good deal, I'll be with you in a minute. Good. You got the wagon unloaded. Yeah, the sacks gave out about 10 seconds before I did. Well, I don't know about you. I'm ready for the beer. Come on. No, maybe I better. Ah, oh, come on, Annie. One beer's not going to hurt anything. Hey, that song. Where's it coming from? Annie, it is coming from the same place where we're going to get the beer. Come on, let's go. Lovely ribbons, scarlet ribbons, scarlet ribbons for her hair. Come on, Lil, pick it up. Your feet are dragging. Look, at this hour of the morning, I'm lucky to be standing on them. All the stores were closed and shuttered. All the streets were dark and bare. In our town, no scarlet ribbons. Howdy. Good morning, old Joe. Have a couple of beers, Cosmo. Right away. Just before the dawn was breaking, I peeked in and on her bed in gay profusion lying there. Lovely ribbons, scarlet ribbons. Two beers, old Joe. Yeah, thanks, Cosmo. Any your beers here? I will never know from where came What's the matter? You want something stronger? No, it's not that. Huh? Lovely ribbons, it's not that. Ribbons, what? I can't hear you. I said she's singing it all wrong. I haven't even finished my first cup of coffee, and already I've got a critic. Uh, he, he didn't mean anything by that, Miss Lily. Uh, he, he was just kidding you. Y yes, ma'am. You got a right to sing it any way you want to. Oh, even if I was singing it all wrong, huh? Y yes, ma'am. Even then. <laughs> Whoever made you a critic, Mr. Whatever your name is? My ma, she, she didn't make me an expert on music, but she did teach me how that song ought to be sung. Hey, Mike, let's listen to the maestro here. Let him show us how the song really ought to be done. Well, sure, if you really want me to. Step right up, take stage. The, the way you did it was just fine, except a little bit slower. To say good night, then I heard my child in prayer, and for me some scarlet ribbons, scarlet ribbons for my hair. Oh. Stars were closed and shuttered on. Hey, kid, keep going. No, I, uh, I better not. 
Well, I've heard enough. Enough to know you've got a beautiful voice. Well, it gets the hogs in for feeding at least. Well, you sure surprised me, Eddie. I thought it was great. Thank you, Joe. How long you been studying, kid? Well, the only studying I ever did is what my ma used to teach me. Well, why'd she stop? She died four years ago. Why? Well, I better be getting back because my pa wouldn't like my being here. See you, Joe. No, I'm coming with you. Take it easy. Thanks for the beer, Charlie. Sure. Yeah. You ain't eating, you sick? No, Pa, I'm fine. I was just thinking. Well, thinking don't stick to your ribs like stew. They won't get that plow picked up in town tomorrow. I haven't forgotten the plow, Pa. I'm just remembering that piano we had when Ma was with us. Did you ever think about getting us another piano, Pa? No. I just thought it'd be nice to have a little music around the house, that's all. We had music around when your mom was alive. When she died, so did music. What got you thinking about a piano? Oh, nothing, Pa. It just crossed my mind, that's all. Well, uncross it. Maybe birds got time for songs, but farmers don't. Ma used to say it, the whole world's a song if you just listen hard enough. Yeah, she did say that. But she's gone. There'll never be another like her. You're right, Pa. There'll never be anybody like her. Thank you, Pa. Mike, play the kids' version of the Scarlet Ribbons, hmm? picture this. We had half the place mad with us because we played Dixie. And the other half is mad because we played Battle Him with the Republic. 
Now, if you think this is such an easy job, what do you think we played to keep peace? Beach me. God save the queen confused them all. <laughs> well, I think I'm going to go over and see if I got any room at the barber shop. You... No, just a trim. Oh, Lily, why don't you ask Andy about, you know, what we talked about the other night? <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> what, uh, what were you supposed to ask me about? Andy, how would you like to work here? Me? I don't know how to do anything in a saloon. Well, you can sing. Yeah, but I'm not a real singer. Ah, but you could be. And I could start teaching you. Look, Andy, I've been around singers, sweet and sour, all of my life. And I know you can make it. No, my pa never let me. Working in a saloon. It's not what you work inside of the counts, Andy. It's what's inside of you. Don't you want to sing? I think you'd like to try it, wouldn't you? Yeah, I guess I would. Then ask your pa. Just ask him. For me. I, uh, I better be getting home. Bye, Miss Lily. Bye. But it's not as if I'll be away when you need me, Paul. I've said all I'm going to say about it, boy. Okay, Paul, you've had your say. Now let me have mine. You already have. But, Paul, she's just going to teach me how to sing right, that's all. Disrespect for your father is what you'll be teaching you. I don't want you having anything to do with a saloon girl like her. Paul, she's a nice lady, and she says I got a real good voice. I've said all I'm going to say about it, boy. But, Paul, all I want is... What you want don't matter. Can't you understand that? Yeah, Paul, I'm getting to understand that real well. What's that mean? It means I, I've had enough of that kind of talk, Pa. Now I'm... I'm warning you. You're warning me? Just what you got in mind, Mr. Big Britches. I'll leave, Pa. I'll leave and I'll never come back. You can pack up and get out any time suits you. But, Pa, I'm your son. I lost my son about 30 seconds ago. Well, Mom, I'm leaving. I don't think it's anybody's fault. It's just a natural way of things. I can't be just a son for always. I gotta be a man on my own. So it's natural for a son to leave. But it ain't natural that it's gotta be done with so much pain. Pa's been afraid ever since you left, Mom. It's like he thinks the only thing that he can love is just the earth, not the people, not the things they do, but just the earth. Ma used to always tell me that if I listened real hard, I could hear the breeze singing. Well, I hope someday a, a good breeze will come along 
you'll be able to hear me too. Goodbye, Ma. How you doing? Fine, just fine, little Joe. Yeah, I can, uh, I can see that by the sign. Yeah, just fine if you overlook the fact that I left home and I'm flat broke. You sure you're doing the right thing? Yeah, and don't try to talk me out of it because I've made my own decision. And I'm gonna be a singer. Miss Lily's gonna help me. Look, I wasn't trying to talk you out of anything. I was trying to talk you into a job. We got some horses out at the ranch that need breaking. We need another man. Not anymore, you don't. We got a deal. Come on down to the stable. I'll get your horse. How you doing? I have had some day. I feel like I've been busting Bronx for a week. Are you trying to tell me you're not going to sit down for dinner? <laughs> Listen, I want to tell you, I'm real proud of you, though. You didn't know, but I had an eye on you today. You did real fine. Well, thank you for giving me the job. Well, thank you for taking it. Of course, don't rest on your laurels. We got quite a tough batch of horses picked out for you tomorrow. Nothing like those feather beds you were on today. None of those feather beds like you had today. You could have gone all week without saying that. <laughs> Come on, I'll get you some liniment. Okay. The pipes, the pipes are calling From glen to glen And down the mountainside The summer's gone And all the roses are falling Tis you, tis you must go, and I must bide. But come you back when summer's on the meadow, or when the valley's hushed. And white with snow It's I'll be here And sunlight on In shadow Oh, Danny boy Oh I don't know nobody named Danny, but doggone it, every time I hear that, it chokes me up. I think maybe the way Andy was singing it had something to do with that house. 
Gee, I hope Adam doesn't mind my using his guitar. Oh, Hank, none of us can play. It was just gathering dust till you picked it up. You keep playing it that way. <laughs> I understand you're taking some singing lessons, too. Well, sorta. I mean, not from a real teacher. It's just Miss Lily down at the Silver Dollar. Now, Andy, just because Miss Lily sings at the Silver Dollar doesn't mean that she can't sing or teach. Hey, they offered you a job over there at the Silver Dollar, didn't they? Yeah, start this Friday if I want to. Did you uh, tell your pa about this? Well, I better be getting over to the bunkhouse. I got a long day tomorrow. Good night, fellas. Excuse me, sir. Good night. Good night, Good night Andy. Andy. Good night, Andy. Now, Pa, I wish somebody could, I don't know, talk to his father, try to explain the boy's side of it. Yeah. Well, let's go to bed. Yeah. So come me back when summer's in the meadow. got nothing to say to each other. Well, something I'd like to say to you. You know, Andy's working at the Ponderosa. You can tell him from me. Ain't no use sending you here begging my forgiveness. Well, he didn't send me here. There's doers and there's dreamers in this world, Ben. And a dreamer's just bound to get in my way. His mother did that. She was a good woman. Meant a whole lot to me, she did. But she had her head in the clouds. Head and heart, too, for all I know. She was a fine woman. And she never seemed to understand that life is hard facts. She taught Andy to think like she did. Singing ain't gonna fix this old fence of mine. Now, Willard, the way Andy sings, you ought to be proud of him. Do you know that... That people are paying to hear him sing? For money? Where? At the Silver Dollar. I'd be obliged if you'd let me get on with the work, Ben Cartwright. All right, Willard. You keep right on building that fence. You make sure it's real strong so nobody can get in. And make sure it's real high, so nobody can look in and see how alone Willard Walker really is. A brand new, wonderful singing talent, a young man from your own Virginia City, Mr. Andrew Walker! Hey! <laughs> 
I peeked in to say good night, then I heard my child in prayer. Send to God some scarlet ribbon, scarlet ribbon for my hair. All the stars were closed and shuttered, all the streets were dark and bare. In our town, no scarlet ribbons. Hey, Lily. Sam here just told a story. Sam just told a story that's going to get you thrown out of here in your backside if you don't shut up and listen. Now pipe down, you galoots. We don't want any trouble. How much more shame and humiliation I got to take in account of your singing, boy? No more, Paul. No more. I come over and see how you're doing. Fine. I talked to Lily. She wanted me to come over and tell you how bad she felt about the other night. She kind of feels responsible for what happened. It wasn't her fault, Joe. It wasn't anybody's fault but mine. I disobeyed my father, little Joe. I disgraced him by making a public spectacle out of myself by singing in a saloon. But I'll never do it again. Because I'll never sing again. Oh, look, that doesn't make sense. There was nothing wrong with what you did. There's nothing wrong with singing. Singing's a sin, little Joe. My pa made me see it, and I see it. I hurt him, and I humiliated him. I'll never sing again. Take it easy.
get that wagon load of horseshoes? Yeah. Also run into Andy in town. Looks like you had that situation pretty well figured out. Yeah. You don't laugh anymore, you don't smile. It doesn't seem like he enjoys life at all. I'm getting more like old Willard every day. I was afraid of that. His father's got him convinced that singing and laughing are a sin. I should sort of hear that. Oh, it looks like there ought to be something we could do. I mean, get them together and talk to them. Maybe invite them over for dinner or something, huh? Yeah, what about on Easter Sunday? I think we ought to do something like that. That gives me an idea. Like what? You fellas go ahead and eat. I got me an errand to do. Good afternoon, Willard. Good afternoon, Reverend. Uh, Willard, I brought Reverend Porter along because, uh, well, there's something that uh, he thinks you can help him with, uh, if you will, that is. Well, if I can, I uh, expect I'll help. Well, Willard, you might say this concerns my entire congregation. As you know, Easter services will be held in a few days, and, uh, well... Well, what Reverend Porter's trying to say is that he'd like Andy to sing in his church on Easter Sunday. Well, that's... Hard to say. There's chores and... Willard. Willard in church. Now, there's nothing heathenish about that, is there? I mean, he's not going to be doing the devil's work in Reverend Porter's chapel now, is he? Well, I, I never thought of it. Your wife used to sing for us, Willard. And I'm told that Andy here has her same feeling for a song. It would certainly be a shame if that feeling couldn't be put to use for the benefit of the Lord on that most holy of days. Yeah, sure would be a shame. But it's, uh, it's up to, it's up to you, Willard. And he's your son. The boy can make up his own mind. He did before. It's your decision, son. But I think I know what your mother would want you to do. Yes, sir. I'll sing if you want me to. Well, you got what you come for. If you'd let us get on with our work now. Little Joe told me I'd find you here. I came to congratulate you. What for? Because of your singing again. You are going to sing again, aren't you? <sighs> Reverend Porter asked me to. But... But it's... It's not the same. It used to be that singing was like a deep breath on a spring morning to me. Now it's something I'll do because I said I would, that's all. There's no joy anymore. But, Andy... It's true, Miss Lily. You saw my father in the saloon. It doesn't matter whether he's right or wrong. 
I just know that I never want to be the cause of that much pain again. Andy, I suppose I'm the last one to talk about what's right or wrong, but well, there's one thing I know. If there's anything in this, this whole world that's right, it's your singing. That joy will return, Andy. I know it will. Mr. Cartwright. Where's your pa? I guess he isn't coming. It's Easter Sunday. Well, he's clearing the new field. He says that going to church is a waste of time. Catch up with you. Well, let me help you with that. No, I can get it alone. Well, it's gonna take all morning, isn't it? I ain't got nothing else to do. Aren't you coming to church with me? What for? Listen to that boy bellow like a sick calf? No. Well, it mean an awful lot to the boy. I got more important things to do here. Lord made a man to work, didn't he? Well, even the Lord rested on the seventh day when he looked at his labor and saw it was good. If you're going to quote the Bible at me, Ben, what about the fifth commandment? Honor thy father. It's a commandment that I've lived by, an unwritten one. Honor thy son. I ain't wrong. A man was made for work. What else are we good for? They said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen.
the dearest and best Where a world of lost was were slain So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophy is at last I lay down I will wife used to sing that song. It's beautiful the way he sings it. Till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross. And Bisogna proprio ringraziare Dio, figli miei. È come in paradiso, mamma. Mm. Vedrai, vedrai come crescerà l'uva qui. No, oh, certo. Dammi ancora un po' di vino, Giorgio. Maria, non parlare italiano. Siamo americani. Speak American, eh? How many times I gotta remember you? Papa, the word is in mind. That's what I say, no? Maybe you don't hear so good, eh? <laughs> hey, Lorenzo, how much water are you bringing in today, eh? Oh, Malta, Papa. You have enough for two or three days. Good. I can take a bath tonight. After the grapes, if they have enough of water, then is it your turn. Ah, sta venendo qualcuno. Ma chi sarà? Ma? Ma buongiorno. All right, folks. Howdy. Uh, howdy. I, uh, I, I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Oh, no. My name is Giorgio Rossi, American citizen. Oh, nice to see you. Lorenzo Rossi, American citizen. Hello. How are you? Maria Rossi, American citizen. Well, well, my daughter, you. Regina, also American. Papa. Mark. Anyway, we're all American here. And you know who you are? Yeah, yeah, I'm Joe Carter. You are first guest, that's who you are. You're primo ospite. Ma come on. Ma get us something to eat. That's awfully kind of you, Mr. Rossi, but it's very, very kind of you. All I really wanted was some water. Water? Ma, you know eat the water. <laughs> what are you crazy something? You know make a meal from a water? I'm gonna cut you some bread. Uh, make some cheese. Well, that, 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 that's awfully kind, but all I'm gonna do is hold you folks up. Hold up. I'm gonna kill you if you try. Oh, my no, Papa. He does not mean that kind of a hold up. No? Oh, oh no. No, that's, that's not what I meant at all. No, what I, what I meant was you, you probably have a long way to go. No, we're not going no place. We're going to stay right here. You're going to stay here? Well, see, we like this place fine, no? Oh, yeah, but th th this is our land. Hey, that's what I like about America. Your land, my land, our land. I like American talk. Yeah, yeah you don't seem to... Yeah, this is Ponderosa land. Ponderosa. Hey, that's a beautiful name. Maybe I call my wine that. After the grapes grow. United States uh, Ponderosa Wine Company, uh, made by Giorgio Rossi, eh? Uh, m m Mr. Rossi, see, hmm. the, pon uh, the Ponderosa is a ranch, huh? and my father owns the ranch, and, and this is part of the land. I mean, you're on our land, and we, we can't have nesters. On nester? Who's a nester? I'm American citizen, the 100%. Now, come on, I show you my papers, so you don't believe me. 
Look, Mr. Rossi, I'm sure, I'm sure your papers are in order. And, and if you'd like to stay here overnight, that's perfectly fine. But you can't just live here. You... Just a minute. You think you're so smart. You know the preamble of Constitution? We, the people of the United States Mr. of America, Rossi. in order to Mr. form Mr. a more perfect Mr. union... Mr. Rossi, Mr. Rossi, you're trespassing. You're trespassing. You know the branches of the government? Executive, uh, legislature, judiciary. My you know... Rossi, this is our land. You can't farm on it because we own it. Mascarzone, bricone! Ma che dice? Renzo, spiegami tu, che cosa sta dicendo questo non so, qua? Non mamma, forse dice la verità. Ma, ma no. come è possibile se siamo arrivati qui noi prima di lui? Aspetta, 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 aspetta! You think you know everything. I know my rights. Patrick and Henry say, when the people want to be free, sometime they got to fight. If you don't get off of my land, sometime it's going to come pretty soon. This is not your land, it's our land, and you're not going to farm on it. Now look, if you'd like to stay here I overnight... I think sometime can... is here. Now you get on your horse to get off of my land. Now! My, off of my land. I'm going to tell you something. This, this is our land. Ah, I'm down. And you get on your horse I'm down. I'm down. and you get off of my land. Yes. That's not your land. Voi siete un on your horse. Andatevene. Voi siete il ladro piuttosto che dite che questo terreno è vostro. Nostro è! Oh, one minute. You go away. Andate. You go away. Andate. Non andate. 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 You're supposed to be so smart. He wasn't gonna hold us up. It may sound funny to you in a telling, but there's nothing funny about Nestor's. <laughs> no, you, you remember what happened over at Jim Boland's place last year? Now, they dang near wrecked it. We don't want the same thing happen there. Oh, Joe. Oh, come on, serious! <laughs> there was nothing funny about that blunderbuss he was waving around in my face, either. <laughs> Joe, it seems to me like you just didn't use enough tack, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose you would have handled the whole thing a lot better, huh? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I couldn't handle it much worse. Joe, they just got themselves a little mixed up. Besides, nobody can grow anything on that ground anyhow. Yeah, you, you, you want to know how mixed up they are? You want to know how mixed up? The wine that they're going to make. They're going to call Vino di Ponderosa. That's how mixed up they are. Joe, he's just a poor little immigrant fellow, Joe. I'll ride out there tomorrow and reason with him and handle everything. Don't worry about it. But while you're reasoning with him, you better be able to explain the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Joe, look, I'm a little older than you are, and I've seen... I know, yes. You've seen so much more, and you've lived... And you know how to handle these things so much better than I do. Well, frankly, that's right. <laughs> well, I think I better be getting to bed. But... Oh. Good night, Pa. <laughs> Good night. Hey, everybody. Come over here. Come on and look. Yes. Cross. Eh, bello, huh? Nice. United oh. States grapes, vino di Ponderosa, Giorgio Rossi, proprietario. Mm -hmm. Bello, Papa. And someday, I'm going to put and the sun right over there. Uh -huh. hmm. You're going to be big man in the United States of Territory Nevada, maybe even a governor. Hey, maybe even Presidente. Ma he can't be President. He's not born in America. It says in the Constitution. Oh, yeah. And hey, you know this, too? Mama, I see. Mommy. What this man knows, you couldn't hold in a book. Mm. <laughs> Ma, it's because mm. I read in America. And when you can read, you know your rights. Yeah, I read John. Well, come. We're going to thank God for helping us with this land. In nomine Patri, et Filio, et Spiritus Sancti. Thank you, dear God, the Lord of us all, for help us with this land. We promise we're going to work hard to make it a great, strong and a sweet. You help us all the way from our home to our new home here. May you give us each other to love. I just uh, want to ask you one more thing. Help uh, all of my family to learn uh, patience. 
and then we're going to light a special candle. Thank you, San Antonio, for help us find this land. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit of God. Amen. Howdy. Howdy, partner. My name is George Rossi. Uh, hi, Mr. Rossi. I'm happy to meet you. I'm Hoss Cartwright. Mm -hmm. My little brother came out here and talked to you the other day. Do you recall? I know. Came out here and talked to you about this property, or tried to. Oh, younger fellow. Mouth full of very nice teeth. Pretty horse. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be a little joke. Is it no good? Now, wait a minute. Ma, don't feel bad. My wife, she got an uncle. He steal a farmer from his own sister. Ma, every family, they got a curse. No, oh, no, Giorgio, he no steal. I told you. It's like this. Scusi, what's your name? Horse, ma'am. Oh, horse, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, I mean, no, just horse, horse. Well, a horse, you see, it's like this. My uncle, he went into Roma in Italia. And Ma, no, 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 Roma, Italia. But speak American, Roma, Italy. Oh. Ma, my wife, she talk a pretty good American. Of course, oh. not so good like me. <laughs> you like to have a cup of coffee? No, no, thank you. What, what I came here for, Mr. Rossi, was to, to explain some things to you, to sort of reason some things out, you know. Oh, that's a nice. Yeah, well, first of all, uh, Mr. Rossi, you, uh, you're just plain mistaken. You see, this land here is ours. I, I don't know where that is that you're looking for, but th this ain't it. And I know you've just made a plain honest mistake. Well, we don't make a mistake. You make a mistake. You know a homestead act? I sure do. Yeah, uh, the Ponderosa is all homestead. Where's your dwelling? Dwelling? You gotta have a dwelling for a people to inhabit. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I know what you're talking about, and we got one. It's up in the Piney Woods back north of here. Well, my dwelling is right over here. Come on, I'm going to show you. Here is a dwelling. My dwelling. Well, fine, Mr. Rossi, but it, it still don't make no difference. I mean, they just ain't no way that this land can be yours. Now, if you stay here, people are going to say you're a thief. You don't want that, do you? What's he doing? He's going to get a gun and kill you. Oh. Mr. Rossi, let's do some more talking about this. That's the pretty the one and now you. Mr. Rossi. Both the thieves are both trying to steal my land. I heard a man of that thing, Mr. Rossi. You get on, you horse, you, and you get you, out of here. Mamma mia. means that I'm something less than a decent human being, but that just ain't so. Dad Bernard, I came here as nice as I knew how. And yeah, your papa just can't understand that this land belongs to my pa. You got a piece of paper what the proves that this land belongs to you? Well, no, I ain't, but, but I reckon my pa has. Oh, then the next time you want to talk to me, you bring your papa. I know do business with the little boys. Come, my son. Oh, every bruise a badge of courage. We have just begun to fight. Now, I'm, I'm mighty sorry about all that over there. I, no matter what you might think, I didn't come out here to start this. If there's anything I can do to help... We I... do not need your help. Next time, I'm not going to be so easy on him. Papa, Papa, suppose he is right. Huh? You think maybe he's right? Uh, Who's well, telling me we grow the grapes here? Huh? Who's telling me about the homestead law? It was Lorenzo. Oh, you be hush up. Papa, the word you mean is a quiet. And you be hush up too. Why you think he's right? Eh? You some kind of a dumb head? No, Papa, I am not a dumb head. Uh. 
Then why then you think a horse is right? Perché... Well, he just does not seem like a bad man. Ah! Oh. Tu a figlio è imbecille! Oh. Hey, think all the bad men, they have a sign, eh? It says, no, trust me, I'm a bad man. Ma va, devi fare sempre il pagliaccio, tu! E tu ti sei fatto no, male, no, guarda! No. Oh, figlio mio! No, I'll tell you, Jewel, those people are hungry. All right, come on, is that what the girl told you? Certainly not, she didn't tell me that thing. All you gotta do is... Look at them and you know that they ain't got enough to eat. Well, they didn't look so bad off to me. Matter of fact, that girl looked kind of pretty. What did you think, Oz? Joe, that ain't got nothing to do with it. Oh. Well, how do you expect to get rid of them if you're making it so easy for them to stay? Joe, you catch a lot more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. Oh, you're right. You know, you're right. But we don't want to catch them. We want to get rid of them. All we got to do is just let them know that we don't mean no harm, that's all. Oh, yeah, that's good thinking. And yeah, we'll let them stay out there maybe 10, 15 years. Gradually, they'll get used to the idea. And we'll break it to them gently. You know, Pa's going to be here in a couple of days. And if they're still out there, you and I are in a lot of trouble. They ain't going to still be there, Joe. But at the same time, I ain't going to make enemies out of them. Well, the way you're worried about that girl seems to me you want to make relatives out of them. No, just a minute. I'm going to ride along with you. After all, you, you handle these things so much better than I do. I, I want to be there so I can learn from you. Look, you've only been out there one time. You already managed to empty the kitchen. I want to be on hand for your next victory. Some people just ain't got no faith, that's all. Papa, tu lo vuoi il sugo oggi sulla pasta? I know. No, pasta niente sugo per papà. Va benissimo. Tu ne vuoi ancora? Basta questa quantità? No, eh, lasciami abbastanza per me. Aspetta, che mi sto confondendo. Senza sugo per te, eccolo qua che arriva. Now, Joe, I don't want you flying off the handle of these folks. Me? Look, I'm not the one who got in a fight with him. Well, that was just a misunderstanding. As a matter of fact, this whole thing's a misunderstanding. So don't bring up that homestead thing till they've, till they've learned to trust us. Now, come on. Sto in bianco per te. Sì. Eh. Eh, sta venendo gente. Ah, sono e carte right. Oh. Why you come here? You get off of my land. Now, just hold on a minute, Mr. Rossi. We, we didn't come here to make no trouble. Oh. You come and maybe make apologize to Giorgio? Well, we, uh, we come here to talk friendly. <laughs> That's a nice. You come and sit down. Have us something to eat. Uh, Mr. Rossi, I don't think we ought to do that. Oh, we you have plenty. Oh, we have a plenty. Come on, sit down, please, a little joke. Right. Well, we, we don't want to take the food out of your mouth. Oh, yeah. look, we have all kinds of food. Look, you like a pasta? Uh, show them what you got in the sack, Santa. <laughs> I, uh... <clears throat> I brung you a little food. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> My people want to bring other people food. They can't be all bad. Avrai ragione, forse dici bene. Oh, ciao, mamma. You like, eh? While you people and eat, Lorenzo and I, we're going to go get to some water. Oh, Mr. Rossi. Talking about that water, you know, that's a mighty long haul for you folks to have to make. And I've just been thinking, I know this beautiful little piece of land about 10 miles south of here. Oh, but there is plenty of water right here. Here? See, si. Now, look on the tree. How you think they live? I tell you, they push them a roots way down a deep, where is it the water? Well, sure, Mr. Rossi, I know there's many underground rivers all over this desert, but... They're all alkali. <laughs> I make them pure again, that's all. Lorenzo, andiamo. Uh, finish your dinner. What are you looking at me for? It's uh, very simple. He's going to make the water pure again. What's the matter with you? Hmm. That was good. Sure, yeah. You know, Regina, that, that popper here is kind of a muley one, ain't he? Oh, see. Si. He's nice. <laughs> That's a fine looking coffee pot. What is that? Oh, it's cafe espresso. Italian coffee. Yeah? See? Si. Italian coffee, huh? You like? Mmm. I never, never tasted anything quite like that. <sighs> I think I'll take my plate over there.
Uh, here's more dishes. Oh, grazie. Can I, can I give you a hand, Mrs. Rossi? You? Oh, no, you poor thing. You poor thing? Yeah, you, you, you've been sick, eh? Who, me? No, I'm fine, ma'am. Oh, you're too skinny. Too skinny, look. Look, you, you, no, no one could even pinch you. Don't you know, silly? <laughs> you want some more coffee? No, 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 thank you, Regina. It's, it's fine, but I sort of like this wine, too. It's mighty fine. You, uh, like my cucina italiana? Huh? Italian food. Oh, yeah. I love it. It's delicious, and it kind of sticks to the ribs, too, don't it? Oh, Italian women are all very good cooks. Do everything to make a man happy. From the time we are little girls, we learn how to sew, to cook, to bring happiness. Yeah. <clears throat> Look, Regina, this may not be none of my business, but... Well, uh... Have you been spoken for? Spoken for? Uh, well, I mean, uh... Have you, uh... You got a feller you like? Oh, see, si, many. Lorenzo, Papa... You, Tonio? Tonio? Si. Who's he? Fidanzato mio. Fidanzato? Si. What's that? Oh, he's like, uh, how you would say, the trusted one. Oh, like a friend. <laughs> well, everybody's got to have friends. I mean, I mean, where would we be if we didn't have a few trusted ones, right? <laughs> si. <laughs> You know, wine is a much more than just a drink. Wine is a more than just a for cooling the tongue. When you make a wine, you're never alone. You are partner with the sun and of the earth. You use a God's gift to ease the burden of man. Wine is not just the one thing, it's a many. Now, when the two people, they're in love, there is a wine. When all the persons sit, watch the sunset, feel cold, there is wine. When a man, he want to be alone, hear his soul, there is a wine too. And when a man makes a new friends, there is also wine. So, I drink it to you, Mr. Hosakar the right, Lily Joe. A salute. Good luck. Salute. Giorgio, what's the matter? You not can sleep? I've been thinking. It's a long way from our village. From the little house where I take you for my bride. Long way. I think maybe Giorgio Rossi is to make a mistake. Ma no, Giorgio, che dici? Take your wife, your bambin. I come to a stranger country where nobody doesn't know me. Nobody cares about your wife, your bambini. Nobody. Ma what are you talking about, Giorgio? We have friends already. Friends? Oscar Carteright, Lily Joe, you think... Ma sure, they're nice boys. They're very nice boys. But they don't know how I feel. They don't know what I want. They don't know in here, in the side, how I feel in our village. Everybody know how I feel, what I want, because they wanted the same things. You understand? Sure, I understand. <laughs> now we come to this country, we, we no can go back. That's what makes me worry. What happens... The grapes, they die. The grapes do not grow. Mm, How is George Rossi going to take care of his family? Look, you make barrels before. And there, you make barrels again. That's all. I'd rather die first. Look, look, look at these hands. They're the hands of a farmer, a grower of grapes, and not the barrel maker. My father. He's a grandfather. And he's a father. They all grow grapes. 
George Ross is the only one making the barrels. I think it's very bad for a man to try to be something he's not. Giorgio, look. We carry the land, huh? Our land. We carry the grapes, our grapes. We pray. We pray al buon Dio. And the grapes, they will grow. Don't you worry, Giorgio. Pray. Abbi fede, amore mio. Don't you worry. Everything's going to be all right. Hello, Seth. Glad to see you back. Well, it's good to be back. You haven't seen my boys, have you? They're supposed to pick me up. Well, it could be they're picking grapes. <laughs> what? Oh, you're a sly one. Importing tenant farmers clear from Italy and all the time making out you're a cattleman. <laughs> tenant farmer? You're getting old, Seth. Well, now, there's no need to be insulting just because you're on your way to becoming the Nevada wine king. What are you talking about? You mean you really don't know what I'm talking about? No. Well, little Joe will fill you in. How you doing, Pa? Let me, let me take your bag. Never mind the bag. I understand you've got something to tell me. Something to tell you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. You, you, look, you look great. I think it did you a lot of good getting away. Did it? Well, the way Seth Hayes was cackling, I don't know if it did. Hey, Joe. Oh, how you doing, Bill? I hear tell you got to stomp them grapes to get the juice. Old Hoss has sure got the feet for stomping. Yeah, I'm going to do a little stomping in your direction if you don't shut up. Hey, you just hold your tongue. Now, what's this about grapes? Grapes. Grapes. I think I'm going to show you. Nino D. Ponderosa. Georgia Rossi proprietor. I didn't think he'd be too happy about it. Well, that's sort of the understatement of the year. Right over there. Yes, sir. Ponderosa. His Holiness the Pope. He have uh, such a house uh, on the lake uh, Lago Albano. Ah, it's beautiful. The lake is uh, blue, the trees green. Right. Now you're getting the picture. All it needs is just to have you go up there and homestead it. Sounds very good. Good. <laughs> For somebody else, the grapes, they grow much better in a hot sun. Hi, Paul. I, I'm surprised to see you out here. Yes, I figured you would be. Yeah, I... My, you sure have got a nice suntan, Paul, and it's real becoming on you. Paul, this is, uh, this is Mr. Rossi. Mr. Rossi is my Paul. Mr. Rossi? Mr. Cartwright, maybe you'd like to come inside to have some coffee? Regine! No, don't, don't trouble yourself. What I have to say will take a very short time. Whatever you have to say, it sounds better here. You see, when two people have something to say to each other, it's more better if one is not so far down from the other. Si, Papa. Mr. Cartwright, may I present my daughter, Regine? How do you do? Now, Regine, please, make us some coffee. Bring in the side, eh? Mr. Carter, right. Go easy on the coffee. No, oh, please. Now we talk. Now, look, Mr. Rossi, what I'm about to say may seem uh, blunt. I thank you for the hospitality. It's been very generous, but... This is my land. And I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Your son, the horse. He tell me this is your land. You are a son. He tell me the same thing. This is your land. You got a fence? No. Uh, you got a sign like me? No. 
I tell you what you got. You got the big ideas. You think you big land the barone. Oh, I know lots of people like you in all the country. You think I take off my hat to you? I say, yes, sir. No, sir. Well, you think wrong. This America is no bigger man, a little man is only man. Uh, you like to have some coffee now? No, no, thank you. You know, understand, you see, I work very hard. I save money. I bring my family to America. They make a big shadow on this land. Oh, I'm sure they will. I, I know they will, of course. But, uh, you see, I, I, I agree with you. I, I feel exactly the same way as you do about, about things. But, but you see, you, you can't go through life defying the law. And this is my land. I know homestead the law. But you gotta have admirable a dwelling. You gotta work at the land. Why, what do you think, I'm a stupid? No, of course I don't think you're stupid. You know, you're not a very good listener. Oh, I listen very good. Mama, you always come back and say the same thing. Your land, your land, get off of your land. This is my land, you get off of my land. All right, now listen to me, and listen real good. This is my land. You can't grow grapes on it. You can't grow anything. Is that understood? I'll give you a week to get off. And now the big land of Barone giving me a week. When the week go by, I'm still here. Then what happened? Then I'm afraid I'll have to move you off. And I'm afraid I have to fight. I would... Consider that very carefully if I were you, Mr. Rossi. Just remember, the law is on my side. This is my land, and you are trespassing on it. But I know the law, and I tell you, you trespassing, and you get off of my land. <laughs> Mrs. Bixby. It's not gaudy, but it's neat. <laughs> Please, do, Mr. How much is this to hold? Oh, good morning, Ben. What can I do for you? Well, I'll, I'll wait. Mr. Rossi was here ahead of me. Well, if that's the way you want it. I, I take this one, a dollar fifty, huh? That'll be two dollars. Well, it's just a dollar fifty. Well, the price just went up. Take it or leave it. I'll leave it. What's wrong, Papa? I gotta find another place to buy a hoe. Howdy, partner. Hey, Billy. One of all them Italian gals are as pretty as this one. Well, I ain't what you'd call an expert. But uh, I hear Hoss Cartwright is getting to be real knowledgeable on that subject. <laughs> Maybe you could help us out, mister. She's your daughter, ain't she? No put your hands on me. Ain't no call to get feisty. You foreigners got some strange customs. What the fuck you call them in a foreigner? What should I call you? I'm an American. I'm just a so good American as you. Well, now, you know you don't look it. You take that hat, for instance. Now, I ask you good folks, did you ever see such a hat? <laughs> Hold it, Billy. Hold it! Let go. What's the matter with you, Billy? Give Mr. Rossi's hat. You ain't siding with this emigrant squatter, Mr. Cartwright. I clean up that hat and hand it to him. I just want everybody to get this straight. What's between Mr. Rossi and me is between the two of us and no one else. I don't need anybody's help or anybody meddling. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. But, no, I still got to find some place to buy a hoe. I just couldn't believe my ears. I simply could not believe my ears. Billy Laner, of all people. <laughs> 
I remember when his father first came here, Dutch Lander. Couldn't put two words together without putting the cart before the horse. Partners, we're all of us partners in one way or another. Paul, I've been thinking. That land out there don't mean nothing to us no more. Why don't we just give it to him? Well, I'd be doing a disservice to every other landowner in the territory. I'd be establishing a precedent for, for nesters. Well, we're not going to make a habit out of it. No, that's true. But, well, what would it do to Rossi, a man like him? A man with this kind of pride if he found out that I'd given it to him? Can't do that. Yeah, Paul, there's still there's just two ways you can get rid of something, and that's either sell it or give it away. Well, he can't afford to buy it. Ah, no, the going price he couldn't. Hey, Paul. Yeah, I know. I know. Why do we have to sell it to him at the going price? Right. Right. Howdy, Regina. Lorenzo. Hello, horse. Is Rossi? Is your husband around? He is in there. I think he's not well. He just sits there and he, he stares. Is he hurt? Seguro he's hurt. <laughs> you, uh, you think it'd be all right if I went in there and talked to him a minute? Rossi? Hoss, please, hey, come in. Come, sit down. Thank you. I, uh, I heard what happened with all them yehus in town. I'm sorry. What? You, you sorry? I, I'm going to leave? Leave? I lose my shadow. You know, the, the bigger shadow the Rossi's that they're going to make on the land. You see... I have a dream, but here. I, I see the grapes that they grow, they get the fat. The people that they laugh, they happy, they drink my wine. Today, I go into town, and the people that they laugh at me, they make fun of my clothes, they throw my hat, I lose my temper, I fight. Why they hate me? They don't even know me. Well, that's just it, Mr. Rossi. They don't know you. See, they're ignorant. And that's the way with an ignorant man. He, he hates anything you don't know or understand. Let me tell you something. That dream you had, there wasn't nothing wrong with it. It's good. Where would this world be if there wasn't men like you that had dreams and had, had the guts to make them stick? And you ain't lost your shadow, neither. You can, you can cast it right here on this land, and me and Poe and little Joe will help you. you. You want me to stay? You doggone right stay. <laughs> I, I, I'm wrong. I think I know I have a friend. <laughs> I have a three good friend. God right the family. <laughs> He's a very good to you. You admit that you make a mistake about the land. <laughs> Marie! Hey, Mr. Ross, I, Marie. Wait, Mr. Ross, I don't think you understand. Mr. Ross. Hey, sit in another place. We're going to have a guest for dinner. Lorenzo, come on and we walk a grace. Mr. Ross, now, hold on. Just a minute. That's Hold on to what? Ma, I don't even tell them what you say. Well, that's just it. There ain't nothing to tell them. Now, Dad Burnett, we're misunderstanding one another again. What I meant to say in there was... Well, what I meant to say in there was that we'd... We'd sell you the land. Sell? Sell? Now the big shot for land of our only want to take a George Osam on there. Now, Mr. Rossi, if you'll just be reasonable. Reasonable? Who's no reasonable? You. Who has no sign? You. Who has no papers? You. Who has a dwelling? Me. Who planted the crops? Me. And I know by no land what to belong a USA citizen. Mm. Oh, que ladro. Papa, you don't say nothing. Pick up a barrel, come on. We're gonna water the grapes. Mr. Rossi? 
My son, Horst, tells me that he talked to you about... You still think you big land of Barone, huh? Don't you know you can sell what you don't own? Do you read? Of course I can read. Come on, Ed. Morning, George. Morning. George, get me out the plat mat of the Ponderosa, would you please? Is a seal of the United States. Washington, Lincoln, yep. Bill of Rights. Mm -hmm. This uh, official uh, genuine USA officer. Yeah, you can bet on it. There it is. Now look, give me. I want to see. Huh. Here. From here, around here, and there. Huh. And that's the boundary of the Ponderosa. Huh. Now, you see that? You know what that is? That's where the grapes are. That's right. That's it, mister. Finita la comedia. I'm gonna get off of your land. You know, I've been thinking. I'd sure like to get rid of that piece of land. I'd like to sell it. Hey, how about a hundred dollars? One hundred dollars? I know the value of the land is worth much more. No, not to me, it isn't. George Rossi is a no-take a charity from a nobody. I'm not offering charity, I'm offering to sell a piece of land. Please. Maybe you think George Rossi is a, a pot, a, a crazy. I don't think you're crazy. I'd just like to get rid of a worthless piece of land. You can pay for it don't over a longer say period no of time. Don't say no more. Just to say goodbye. Now, hold on there. Now, what are you going to do? Do? Yeah. What about what about the grapes? They're gonna die. The land to go back is just the way it was. And I'm I'm gonna make barrels. You're gonna make barrels? But, uh, I make the best barrel in the whole world. You ask anybody. But I don't like making barrels. I like making grapes. It's the only way I know how to make money. Outside making uh, grapes. So I'm gonna make barrels. Try to give him the land, but would he take it? No. <laughs> I've never seen a man so prideful and stubborn in my life. Oh, you're a little bit prideful yourself. But not stubborn. Well, well maybe strong-headed. I'll tell you one thing, he sure knows how to work them grapes. You know, that little cuss has got some way figured out to get all the alkali out of that underground river. Some kind of a filtering system or something. And I'll bet you can make it work. Where are you going? I'm going to try to talk a good farmer out of being a mediocre barrel maker. Mom, don't cry. Not... There's going to be another time, another place. Ah. Mm. Now look, Rossi, you can't do this. My, I leave. Don't worry. Oh, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute now. You're not going anywhere. What's the matter with you? You do everything you can to make me leave. I leave. Now, wait a minute. And you get the black alkali out of the water. In Italy, we know ever so much water. We learn to use what we have. Yeah. How? How do you do it? I need to know. You need. You need. Mr. Rossi, I'm a cattleman. Do you know how many head I could run over the other side of that ridge if I could water them? Five, six hundred head of cattle. Do you know what that means in dollars and cents? Always in dollars and cents. Oh. oh, I see. Well... I guess maybe that was another one of those dreams of yours. I don't know if he can get the black alkali out of the water. Or... Hey, listen. George Rossi may be many things. Maybe he's a little foolish, but he's not a liar. Come on, I'll show you. I'm going to build one the cistern and there, another one over there. So you'll have a lot of water with uh, black alkali. Please, let me finish. In the one cistern up, 
Put the canvas a bag full of gypsum. Water still run down the hill, no? Yeah. The water run it through the canvas a bag, through the gypsum, run it down to this cistern to come out of fresca, pure. Yeah. Mr. Rossi, I'll trade you this section of land if you'll help me set up this system in two places. Now, this isn't charity. I need it. You uh, put them in writing? In blood, if you want it that way. With the USA seal? With all the trimmings. Have won. <laughs> we make a business. Okay. <laughs> oh, 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 Cielo, Everything off of the wagon. Uh, Money. <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, you never know how happy you make me. Oh, well, Regina, I know. I know how much you care about your father. Oh, see, but it is more than that. My fidanzato arrives tomorrow, and if we had to leave oh, it... Oh, yeah, Horst told me about that. Your friend, your trusted one. See, huh? and if it were not for you, well... Howdy, partner. Howdy, partner. Has he arrived yet? No. Okay. <laughs> My, that sure is a pretty dress, Regina. Oh, mm -hmm. I got to look pretty for Tony, huh? Oh, he's going to be such a big help to Papa. He knows all about the grape. You're going to like him, horses. Uh, Bernard, I wish you'd get that down to just one, just plain horse. Well, no, I think you're big enough to be plural. <sighs> That's not so. I like him just the way he is. <laughs> some of us got it, and some of us ain't, little brother. Hey, you look beautiful. You look so sweet, are you? Hey, you broke your fanny. You put on a little fat, buddy. Hey, you put on I'd like to introduce you. Uh, this is Mr. Cartwright. Mr. Cartwright? It's a horse Cartwright. Horse? A little Joe. Mr. Joe. Is it Antonio? Antonio. Regina. Benvenuto. Come si vede? Come contenta, Regina, eh? Eh, anche Antonio, guardalo. Beh, avanti ragazzi, su, andiamo a casa che ci aspetta un bel franzetto. Eh, andiamo. Andiamo. Allora, più tardi, signori. Don't worry, you're gonna be the first ones invited to the wedding. <laughs> Arrivederci. Go on. Oh, well, sure, right again. Just like you said, some's got it, some ain't. He's right, Holmes. 